Hey, welcome back to the channel. Do you have a Wii U controller, whether it's the tablet or the Pro Controller, that's starting to drift and makes games like Zelda Twilight Princess impossible to play? Well, they do have the same problem as many of our other controllers with standard gimbals. And fortunately, in the Wii U tablet, it's a pretty easy fix. So, if you stick around, we'll show you how to get that done. All right, on the bench today, we have a Wii U tablet. Um, we haven't done a whole lot with the Wii U, um, just because, I, honestly, I don't get a lot of them in. They, they are fairly robust. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, I've changed only a handful of screens or, or touch panels. Um, this one today actually comes to us because it's, it's got drifting in the, in the sticks. Um, they're a little bit weird to get into. They're, uh, I don't know, they, 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 it seems like they're a little over-engineered. Um, but, uh, you know, for the most part, whenever, like, the touch screens don't work, it can usually be attributed to just junk being pushed up in and around this bezel. Um, you just take them apart and clean them. This one even has a, a big dent uh, in the screen, and, and the touchpad still works fine. Um, and the LCD, of course, you know, wasn't cracked because of it. But, um... But yeah, so let's go ahead and dive into this. Um, this one has been a part, mostly we can tell because in each one of these screw holes, um, you can see there's a little recessed square. There's normally like a little sticker and, and obviously they've been all peeled out. But let's first, uh, let's get our battery out, you know, just so it powers it down. Um, one reason is, is I already tested this one up on uh, my own personal Wii U just to, to see what it was doing. And uh, if we're sitting here playing with it, it might be kicking my Wii U on upstairs. So anyway, so the battery's out. And for the most part, these are, if nobody's been messing with it, they should all be tri-wings. So let's just go ahead and get those out. All right, let's see. We've got one wire holding us up and it's right here in the top. You can just pop it off and the back will come off. Now, we should get something to hold this up a little bit. How about just one of our test card or test games? Um, oops. You know, since uh, we've got two joysticks, uh, we can just kind of get it up and off the table. We had a slider fall out. I'm just gonna make sure. This is probably the volume slider. I didn't see where it dropped from, but we'll figure that out in a minute. Eh, we'll figure it out later. <laughs> uh, you know, when you don't take things apart on a daily basis, you know, like Joy-Cons or, or whatever, um, you know, you, you can't memorize everything. Now, you know, to get into this screen, you know, you've got this frame here, um, and you've got all these ribbons the whole way around. It, it's really kind of a pain, but I think the joysticks aren't too bad. Um, oh, by the way, um, yes, we can replace just uh, the actual gimbal. Um, these are the, basically the same as, as the, the Pro Controller use and, uh, you know, PlayStation 4, that kind of stuff. But you can buy them on these backing boards already. Um, they're only about 10 bucks for the pair. And I'll try to link these down below um, for anybody else that needs to do this. Um, so it's not worth the time and the effort and the energy to desolder the originals and resolder on a new pair uh, because the labor quickly out outdoes the, the value of these guys. But there is one note I want to tell you about. Um, some of these do not come with this little adapter ribbon. Um, and you'll see in a minute that uh, we need, if, if you order these and they have a plug, you need these. Um, because the ones in here, if they haven't been changed already, this little ribbon is actually soldered into the board. So let's go ahead and get into one side of this. We'll turn this box a little bit diagonal so we can get some support under these screws. And the rest of this stuff is Phillips.
We can set the button out. And as I thought, there was one more hiding up under there. If I can get past the little membrane button. There we go. And it looks like the mailman just left us a package. So let's go ahead and get this out. And I'm going to check my mail. <laughs> Let's go ahead and wiggle this out once the screws are all out. You've got one ribbon here to go ahead and pop. It lifts from the front like that. And you want to lift up on it to get it out. This one has little ears that get captured. And it's out of the way. So let's go ahead and get this, since we're already here, just go ahead and get this one joystick out. These are tri-wings for whatever reason. Um, you know, they decide to just mix it up. And the stick comes out and there's a little clip right there. Push it in. And that's pretty much it. The hat just lifts off and we can replace that stick. I'm going to take just a second here and I'm going to go grab my mail. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. But, uh, I was actually waiting for these. Um, needed to order some, uh, business cards and of course, we use the new logo that uh, my oldest daughter made for me. And let's see what they look like. Yeah, they didn't turn out too bad. These ones came from Vistaprint uh, just mainly because it's an online shop that has a good reputation. They seem to, to get stuff done quickly. Uh, it took about a week and a half, almost two weeks for them to show up. Um, but they took the graphic that, uh, my kid generated and, uh, turned it right into a business card. I'm not affiliated with them. Use them if you want. All right. So where were we? We have the stick out. We can do a little bit of cleaning here since we have this out and these are just typical membrane buttons. You know, we can make sure to give them a little, little cleaning. You always get a little carbon off of them. Actually, you get a lot of carbon off this one. Looks like one time somebody probably spilled stuff into it. But, uh, you know, if you if you got something here to help support, make sure it's not pushing your buttons up. Let's get another Q-tip and just go over them one more time. And... So it looks like somebody spilled a little soda into this at one point. Let's go ahead and clean that up. All right, that isn't too bad. Yeah, there's some goo right there too. It's obviously where the slider goes. Okay, so that's clean. All right, so now we just need to see which one of these. So this would be the right one on our left and there is a difference between the left and the right. You can see how the, the boards are, are built. So this is the one that came out, and this is the one that's gonna come in. Now these ones look like they have been replaced, or at least it's a style that does have a plug. Like I said, there are some that have, um, the wires are soldered directly to the board so this little ribbon doesn't come off. So like I said, I don't know if these ones have been changed or not. I don't know the history on this. This isn't, uh, uh, you know, a personal unit that I've owned for forever. This is a, you know, a customer unit. But we always clean up whenever it's not excessive. Um, whenever it is excessive, then sometimes we have to charge for that. But this one isn't too bad. This just looks like normal wear and tear scenario. All right, so the replacement board looks like it fits fairly well. And the tri-wings hold it right back in. Just like that. And I'll set that one aside. I always keep the old boards, even though I know they're bad, um, you know, just in case uh, in the future I can't get parts and you know I need the backing board or I need the ribbon. I'll write bad on the on the 
board. Um, in this case, it was just a drifting issue. So, all right, so we wanna make sure our ribbons or our membranes are back down and the backer will go on like this. Nice and flat. This ribbon will snap back in. I guess it's not a ribbon, it's just a wire and a connector. And then we can get our Phillips wherever it got off to. There it is. And put the screws back in. basic cleaning, get our shoulder button back in, looks like there's a little junk up on this trigger. And that's about it. So that side's done. So this side's kind of a, you know, rinse and repeat of this. So we won't go through it, but I'm gonna go ahead and change this and I'll be right back. All right, I changed the uh, other side. Uh, this one's a little quicker just because you don't have to deal with the speaker. It's, it's tucked up in, but it's basically the same. A few screws, uh, the ribbon, the uh, joystick connector, you know, roll it out, clean the pads, put it back together. Same thing. But I did notice that this is still off. Now, these ones are a little bit tricky and a little bit different than um, uh, some of the other connectors that you've seen me do with the, you know, the the handhelds. This one has, right in this edge, there's two tabs. Now most of them have two little tabs, but in this case, you have to lift, you have to get the front in and lift the back up a little bit to walk those tabs past basically two little spots here and here that uh, capture it. And so it goes in just a little bit differently. Um, now on our slider that fell out, I had to kind of look around. So it's right in here. I'm pr pretty sure it's gonna happen to you also. Uh, you can see there's a small volume slider here and you just gotta look for the little you know, tab on the rheostat sticking up. And it's on this one, it's almost centered. And you can see the little channel in the middle that it has to capture. So when you line it up, it just should be over it and then that should work just fine. And from there, you know, this bit of the shell needs a little bit of cleaning. Uh, you can do it. Um, this one isn't awful, but there's some spots that definitely could use a quick cleaning. You know, customer always likes whenever you return it in a better condition than they sent it. Um, Usually just get you brownie points, uh, you know, for good reviews and whatnot. And I always just clean these corners out with alcohol. Uh, it kills whatever is happens to be living in them. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's not too bad. You can see, you get quite a bit of junk out of them. And... Don't forget about the one power cable here. It only goes in the plug one way. And of course I'm trying to put it in backwards. So if it doesn't go, just flip it around and it'll snap right in. Make sure your triggers are all in place. Make sure your volume slider is where it should be. Everything's good. We can put our screws back in. And finally, we put our battery back in. And what's nice is they left this big compartment and uh, there are some aftermarket batteries that are you know, significantly larger than the OE. 
And our battery back door back on with some small Phillips. And that's it. Pretty simple fix. Um, like I said, the you can go slightly cheaper if uh, you only want to change the stick on your board, but you know, for a few bucks more, um, quite literally, like another $4, uh, you can just buy the entire kit and it just simplifies the process into, you know, a 15 minute job opposed to a 35, 45 minute job with soldering, plus the materials needed for soldering. And, uh, you know, trying to get these off these boards can be tough sometimes. You either need a good solder pump or what I normally do is just use uh, the, uh, the low melt solder. So there you have it. There's the uh, sticks for, to repair a drifting Wii U gamepad. I appreciate everybody who watches my videos and you know, I'd appreciate a thumbs up if you can. If you have to give us that thumbs down, please leave, leave an explanation of uh, what we can do better. And uh, don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell notification so you can see the new content when it comes out. And I appreciate you being here and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.